Recently, I had family in town. I smoked some Donna ribs on the workhorse offset. They were so delicious, I figured I'd better share them with you guys. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake, you're watching Rama Cook. Today on the channel, we're talking about beef dino ribs. Now, you guys have seen these before. They've got the three bones. They puff up like this, commonly referred to as brisket on a stick. And I gotta be honest with you, when I was learning how to use my workhorse, I did a pair, I did a video on them, and um, they were good, flavor was good, but I was having some temperature fluctuation and I did not render out the fat properly, so when you cut into them, you could see uh, some fairly thick white fat, which is something you don't want to see. Now, as I said, the flavor was good, but the texture was a little bit off. And recently, I had family in town. Now, one part of my guests drove 600 miles. The other one flew from Calgary. So I live just outside of Philly. So they had a couple flights that flew to Toronto and then over here. So when guests come into town, especially family, we might go for lunch, but typically we'll have dinner here because they don't get a chance to eat my cooking very often. So I want to spoil them a little bit. And what we did is I, on the Friday, I spent all day running the workhorse and I did diner ribs. I did pulled pork, I did some chicken, did a whole bunch of things. And my Donna ribs turned out absolutely delicious, so I figured I'd better share them with you guys. Before we can do that, let's get the workhorse fired up. Now that we've got the workhorse going, it's time to prep our ribs. Now these ribs are not just any ribs. Got these from Snake River Farms. They are American Wagyu black grade. And I'll tell you what, it is worth the money. When you look at dino ribs, they're gonna be $100, $110. Get yourself some Wagyu for $20 or $30 more. You can even get them on sale and they're gonna be neck and neck. But when you see the marbling, you can really see why these are worth a little bit of extra money. And I'll tell you what, like one person is not gonna eat one of these. We had six of us here for an appetizer and I just took them off the bone, sliced it all up and everyone enjoyed them. So they will stretch out. But what I did is first got out my pepper can in. Always nice to have some fresh ground pepper. So I ground some 16 mesh, roughly 16 mesh black pepper, ground that up and ended up using three tablespoons of pepper to one and a half tablespoons of salt. So we're going two parts pepper, one part salt, put it in a shaker, mix it all up, and then I unpack our ribs. And that top section of those ribs, there's a lot of fat there, and there's, more importantly, there's a lot of silver skin. That silver skin has got to come off on these things. That silver skin is really, really thick, and it's gonna be a chew that you don't want. So you might take a little bit of extra meat, uh, but I'll tell you what, it's well worth doing that because you're gonna get a nicer bark and you're gonna get a, a really nice texture to your, your beef. That silver skin, and once you play with it, you'll see just how thick it really is. You can angle that blade right up against it and it will come right off. So give your ribs a nice good trim. The other thing I did is around the edges, I rounded them off especially on an offset you really don't want sharp edges because those will just tend to burn a little bit more so i'll take my knife and i'll kind of round off those edges a little bit that just helps our airflow a little bit once i was happy with the trim took our salt and pepper we did all the sides first make sure we get a nice healthy even coating on there then i laid them down and put a heavy heavy coating on the top once i was happy with how it looked just padded that in and then we let that rest about 25 minutes now. I put them back in the fridge. I want them ice cold when I put them on. And I came out just to make sure we got our workhorse dialed in. Now, the only thing I would change here is that for today's cook, I didn't have time to dry brine these last night. When I made them for my family, I dry brined them the night before. I actually did it in the afternoon. So they had almost 24 hours of dry brine. Let's that salt really get into the meat. As you can see, this is a big piece of meat. But what will happen here is this will shrink up. We'll see some bone exposure and they'll get really thick. They're going to be delicious. Let's throw these on the pit. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in the middle of the pit and just let the smoke roll. We're running some white oak today. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run at 225 for one hour. Then I'm going to bump it up to 275 and we're going to let it roll 275 the entire time. The one thing that I've been playing with, so you can see here that I've got the damper closed halfway. There's all the way open. We'll close it about halfway. The last few cooks I've been experimenting with that and it's turned out a good product. The other thing you should notice is that we're running a little bit of a dirty smoke, not dirty, but it's not thin blue where you can't see it at all or you can just barely see it. You can see some smoke. You can definitely see it's got a blue uh, tint to it, but you're seeing more smoke than you're used to on an offset. I'm going to run dirty smoke for the first probably two hours. We're gonna run one hour at 225. We're gonna run the rest of the time at 275. I'm gonna bump it right up and I'm gonna run a little bit of a dirtier smoke for that first hour and then we're gonna clean it up and let it go. Now, the one thing to note when you're running your damper like this, you've gotta run a little bit of a bigger fire. When I started playing with this originally, I thought the fire would have to be smaller, but you actually have to run a little bit of a bigger fire to keep your temperature stable. I'll bring it back a little bit. So it's been about four hours. I actually ran at 225 for the first two hours, and then I bumped it up to 275. Let's have a look. The one thing you can see is I did rotate them around. I put the big bones and a larger piece of meat towards the fire. I have been spraying about every hour for the last two hours, maybe every 45 minutes. So I sprayed about three times already. They're looking pretty good at this point. There's not a lot to do. They're gonna take a few more hours yet. We'll just keep rocking at 275 and I'll bring it back. We'll get a little closer to next steps. It's been six and a half hours. Let me bring it up to speed. Sitting right at 181. Hit a bone there. 175. We're in pretty good shape. Daylight is escaping us quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap these guys. Just got some pink butcher's paper here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of tallow down here. We're on some cotton gloves so we can lift these guys up without burning our hands. Now be very careful, these are tender, but they're staying apart right now. So what we wanna do, just gonna throw that right in that tallow. Move a little bit over. There we go. Keep that nice and tight. We're going to throw these back on. And let them keep cooking for a little while. So we've probably got maybe another hour, hour and a half left until we get into around that 202, 204 area, we'll start to feel for tenderness and then we'll bring them off and we'll rest them for about an hour. I'll bring it back when we pull them off. Good morning, sunshine. Well, slight change in plans. Last night I decided to call an audible and it was getting late. I still had an hour rest and I honestly, I wanted to watch a movie with my wife. So I thought to myself, hey, if I could put brisket in 150 in my oven overnight. I'll probably do the same thing with this. So I went ahead and did that. We'll see how it turns out. These are 148 right now, so we're in really good shape. The trick here is to get this out without it falling apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump the tallow. I've already got a bunch on the tray. Oh yeah. Definitely looking the part. 
So before I can cut into this, let me tell you about the contest. On my channel, we do a contest every video. All you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta like the video, and you gotta comment down below using hashtags for that video. For this video, we will use hashtag Dino Ribs, hashtag Snake River Farms. Leave a comment down below using those hashtags, and if your name or comment is randomly drawn, you'll win a $25 gift card to appybq.com. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, I'll double it and I'll make it 50 bucks. So I'll do the drawing for all the videos at the end of the month. Good luck. Let's have a look at how we did here. This one right here. I have to apologize for the lighting because obviously it's right behind me. Not ideal. Take a look at that. Looking quite good. Stay on the bone there, buddy boy. Beautiful smoke ring. These are super hot still. Really liking the looks of that. Take our last one here. Lay down some of that tallow. Really happy with that. Could have rendered just a tad more, but I'll tell you what, these are way better than the first time I did them. I'm gonna take a little piece right off this guy right here. Chop off some of that membrane. That is not gonna come across in camera, but it is a delicious looking bite. Comes apart nicely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is why you use an offset, folks. You cannot get this flavor anywhere else. Look at how red that meat is. So if you've ever asked yourself if you can cook your down ribs the day before a barbecue, put them in the oven to rest overnight and serve them the next day, yes you can, it works just like brisket. So I cook these till about 195, 196 in the uh, very, this end piece that was really small. And it was 189 to 191 in the fat the thickest piece here. Then I let it rest on the counter for an hour. Now my oven naturally goes down to 150 with no modifications. These have been in the oven overnight on a cooling rack for 13 hours. When I tested the temperature this morning, they were 151 to give you an idea. So answer that question for us. These turned are delicious now. It's only 10.30 in the morning, so I don't really want to eat that much beef right now. So I'm gonna keep these warm and eat these for lunch later on. Side note, a couple people commented on the workhorse being a little bit rusty. I gotcha. It's getting rusty on purpose. It's been sitting out in the rain for weeks now. I'm gonna be doing a video to show you exactly how to clean your workhorse and get it looking like brand new. If you like that, subscribe below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.